Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the, of the Miami Hurricanes Talk with Danny podcast. My guest this week is Mike Barber. He's my first repeat guest. Mike, thank you. My, you're my first repeat guest. I'm happy to do it. Good to talk to you again, my yeah, friend. Yeah, sorry I couldn't make the trip up to Charlottesville this weekend. Uh, financial issues had to deal with that. Well, you're, you're missing some peak foliage with the leaves, but I don't know what you're going to miss football-wise. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the season started, Mike, two, when I looked at the schedules of both teams, the thing that I looked at was the fact that I looked at this maybe as an undefeated Canes versus maybe a 6-1 and one Virginia team. Why? Things have changed. This is different now. Now people, they're both fighting for survival at three and four. Yeah, and I think your way of thinking is exactly what Virginia fans were thinking. I think we looked at that early schedule uh, here in Charlottesville and thought, hey, even if this isn't a great team, it has a chance to get off to a great start. Um, you know, Illinois was the one that we weren't sure, but you, you look at Syracuse, they've been maybe better than advertised. But Virginia, I, th I think it's fair to say, has been disappointing Uh it's interesting, you know, we'll get into it, but they fixed a lot of their problems in terms of the defense. And then they have all these problems on offense that nobody really foresaw. And, and bluntly, I think the question was, would they be good enough in the offensive line to get off to a good start? The offensive line has been shaky, but it hasn't been the problem. It's been other things. Yeah. I looked at last week, the defense, I was really surprised with the defense last week. I mean, they get a, an interception, they get, they get turnovers. I mean, last week, Virginia turned the ball over four times, but yet they found a way to win. Brandon Armstrong, people think, has he regressed to you, Mike, this year, or has he gotten better with this offense? So it's just a totally different offense, and he does not look comfortable yet in it. It's a pro-style offense. A, a year ago, they were asking Brandon Armstrong to take the snap in the shotgun and wait for somebody to run open and then hit him with the football. Uh, kind of backyard football. And I'm not trying to downgrade it because those coaches went up to Syracuse and they've been doing a great job there. This offense is more about reads and progressions and timing. Uh, and Brennan Armstrong and the wide receivers have struggled. Now they're throwing the ball 10 times less a game. They threw it 45 times a game last year. They're throwing it 35 times a game this year. Brennan has been less accurate this year and the wide receivers all of a sudden, Daniel have a ton of drops. So you take 10 less throws a game, your quarterback's less accurate, and your receivers are dropping the ball. You mix that in with an offensive line that's been inconsistent and a run game that's been hot and cold, uh, and you don't have a very good offense. Now, you know, we lost Tyler Van Dyke last week. Uh, Mario Cristobal down here has said uh, he's not going to announce if he's going to start this weekend until at least tomorrow. But, you know, we had, it. We had like you said, the expectations going in. He stepped in for King last year. Uh, Jake last week, 10 foot was solid against Middle Tennessee, but I looked at last week against Duke last week. And when after for me, the fourth and nine last week against Duke, Miami just did not have it after that, just 65 yards after that play. And Duke just took over momentum in that game. Uh, what can Virginia take from this win against Georgia Tech? Are they, is this the start of a winning streak for them potentially? I, I mean, I suppose potentially it is. The schedule isn't particularly kind, although Daniel, they do play the next four at home. Um, yeah. Now, Miami, Pittsburgh, North Carolina, and even Coastal Carolina is a pretty good non-conference game. Uh, so the schedule doesn't set up great for them. We mentioned really the hope was to get off to a big start. But ask yourself this. Would you rather go down to Atlanta on Thursday night and win or lose? I mean, obviously, you'd rather come away with the win. They were terrible on special teams. I mean, they, they Tony Elliott flat out said, they should have lost the game based on how badly they played on special teams. Uh, they were nothing to write home about on offense. You mentioned earlier, they were outstanding defensively. Now, if the defense can do that again and the offense can be better and the special teams can clean up the disaster. Yeah. They could build some momentum from that, but that's a lot of things I just listed. <laughs> yeah. Basically last week when we saw, we saw glimpses of the offense waking up, it started again with Wicks. And I looked at the Wick at Wicks last week almost hundred yards receiving and a touchdown and Thompson, 89 yards. I mean, those are two big receivers. Miami has to deal with this week. Oh yeah. And, th and that's the thing that's been driving people crazy up here is the weapons are there. I mean, Don Tavian Wicks is still one of the most explosive wide receivers in the ACC. Keaton Thompson is still unbelievably hard to tackle when he catches the ball in the open field. 
it just hasn't all come together yet. Uh, you're seeing it a little bit more. Dontavian Wicks told us this week that he felt like they really kind of got uh kind of really got some confidence back during the open date. He kind of relaxed, took a, took a step back, thought about the way he was playing. He's playing a little bit more relaxed. They hope that he's going to be better uh, for that. But again, it, you bring up a great point, which is there's all these weapons that look really good and look really attractive. And then they put it together on Saturday. And it's just not clicking. No, exactly. Mike. And the way I look at it, this team should be, should be six and one going in seven, no, seven and oh, Miami plays a four, two, five. Um, and it confused Virginia Tech when they played two weeks ago. Uh, the thing I look at the 25 sacks that we've had, 19 have come on our defensive line, but it's tough to scheme because it's tough to block. Uh, Virginia has the speed to get us going the wrong way. The thing is, do you start to maybe Daniel see a little Lagoran. more consistency? Do you start to see Daniel more Lagoran. consistency, Mike? Daniel. Okay, sorry about that. Do you start to see more consistency, Mike? Daniel is boring. Daniel is boring. Sorry about that, Mike. I'm I apologize. Do you see Mike Virginia's offense starting to click a little more? Yeah, I, I think you're seeing the signs that that this offense is going in the right direction, right? I think you're starting to see Brennan Armstrong get more comfortable, Dontavian Wicks making more big plays, Keaton Thompson finding better ways to get open. Uh, the run game still isn't there, but they're not asking for a ton. And the interesting thing that we've noticed in the last couple of weeks is they've been running Brennan Armstrong a lot more on designed runs. Uh, and that might just be a simple necessity, right? You're not running the ball well in the traditional run game. Your running backs aren't getting it done. Brennan Armstrong taking instead of a second, yourself, you instead, instead of taking a second down you incompletion, you, instead of taking a second down incompletion, now you're taking a tuck the ball, get four or five yards, and, and there you go. You're staying ahead of the chains. So I do think you're seeing Virginia maybe find what it can do well offensively. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Mike. Um, the way I look at this is I look. We all know that we have more talent than Virginia, but the thing is adversity has not been a Miami strength. This, and of course against Duke, you heard Mario Cristobal call our players out during the week. And he said, hey, listen, we want to see, what I want to see from our group is how many guys have what it takes to be a Miami Hurricane and who doesn't. That's just what it boils down to. Um, what have you seen from Virginia that can be able to slow down Miami's offense? Yeah, well, I think that Anthony Johnson, the corner, is a uh, bordering on being a shutdown corner. He's got great ball skills. Um, he's a veteran player. He transferred from Louisville. I, I think he's the kind of guy you can lean on in your game plan to say, okay, where Anthony Johnson is, we don't have to worry. I think that secondary in general um, has played pretty well, and it's played great, Daniel, in tandem with the defensive line. So the defensive line is getting pressure. At times they're getting sacks, but if it's enough pressure to throw off the timing and your secondary is covering, that's where it's really worked well. I've been very impressed with the defense because they've been able to not give up the big plays that were such a big problem a year ago, but at the same time, be aggressive and get after opposing quarterbacks, especially if Tyler Van Dyke isn't playing. To me, that's the key is can you get in? Can you rattle a backup quarterback while not giving up big plays, making mistakes in the back end? Yeah, no question about that. I mean, you have to you have to get it going. I mean, we have to you have to get it going there. So that's what it comes down to. Can Miami bounce back from a bad loss against Duke against a very talented Virginia team, which defensively, I was surprised they were that good last week against Georgia Tech. Can they can they do that again? Uh, I see we have some people that want to come on. You ready to take some questions? Sure. All right, let's see. Blair, we'll start you off. Blair, Blair I'll mute your mic. You're on the air. You have a question for Mike Barber. Hello, Blair. Blair going once. Blair going twice. And Blair is officially gone. Mike, I'm sorry about that. I mean, you get... Okay, he's gone. Mike, I want to personally apologize for that. Oh, you're fine. I apologize. But yeah, listen, I mean, you get people like that. But yeah, to me, the keys to the game, Mike, is we have to run the football. Miami has not been able to run the football. And, I'm, and Brandon Armstrong is a guy who can run the football very well. He almost rushed for 100 last week. 
Um, do you see him maybe as that as a threat Miami would have to deal with running? Yes, out? absolutely. And, and that's what I was saying about they, they've, they've kind of shifted to asking him to get more yards with his legs. Um, you know, they've scored six touchdowns the last three games. And Brennan Armstrong has run for half of them. Uh, you know, that's by design. They trust him in the red zone. He's had some fumble issues, especially early in the year. He had a really costly fumble against Louisville in the red zone. But if you go back and watch the tape, I mean, he's holding the ball right. He's got the pressure points. He's got the ball high and tight. Uh, the defender just kind of put the helmet on the ball. They trust Brendan Armstrong with the ball. Uh, and, and I think the running thing is it's something that he can add to this offense. You know, he had a 43-yard run this past game against Georgia Tech that was not uh, a called play. It was not by design. It was he went through his progressions. Nothing was open saw some room and, and took off and went. And that's what they're going to need a lot of against Miami. And that's tough against Miami because say what you will about where the Canes are, they still have great athletes on defense who can run guys down. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, we have the defense, we have the speed there, but the thing I look at Virginia's against Miami, you know, they cannot turn the ball over. They turn it over four times against Miami. That's asking for trouble, even on the, even, even in Charlottesville. Uh, and not having Van Dyke looks like we may have Jake Garcia start in this game. Um, for me, I think the keys are: does my what heart does Miami have? What talent? What can they bounce back against Duke from? For Virginia, for me, it's got to be: don't turn the ball over, and hit the big plays when you have to. You concur with that? Yeah, I think those are great places to start. I think that the question about Miami and, and you know their resilience or lack thereof to me is the storyline of the game. And um, you, you know it, you live it because you're down there. It seems like no matter how many times you change head coaches, there is that thing about the Miami program where if you're not going to win an ACC championship, there's a little bit of pack it in and maybe not that hard to respond. And now you've got another coaching change. Is it going to be different? Uh, is it going to be different this year or is that in the future? It's an interesting game because I think if you're Virginia, you really want a big start in this one. If you can take an early lead, maybe there's some quit in that Miami team. But Virginia is not very good scoring points. So if you yeah. come out and, and you don't take that early lead and Miami's in this game early, does that wake the Hurricanes up a little bit? And does that have the Hurricanes suddenly playing with a little energy and a little confidence? Um, and then it can get away from you if you're Virginia because Virginia is very limited. Uh, so that's number one. And number two for me is you got to clean up special teams. Yeah. It was a miracle they won against Georgia Tech, missing a couple field goals, missing an extra point, giving up a punt block, catching a damn kickoff, and then <laughs> kneeling down so you're at the yeah. three-yard line. I mean, some of the things that went wrong, uh, it's like from a high school game. So they've got to yeah. get that cleaned up. Yeah. John, 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 A. I see is on here. John, do you have a question for Mike Barber? Hello, John. John, not here. John going once. John going twice. John is gone. So no, nothing there. Uh, for me, I think I look at two things. For me, I think you cannot make mistakes. You can, you have to clean up the turnover. We turned it over eight times against Duke last week. Eight times that's pitiful we have to do better than that and i think miami will in this game uh mike i'm gonna you know i'm gonna let you go on this what is give me a prediction for saturday so i i think this is the game and kevin Steele, miami's defensive coordinator referenced this Virginia's going to put it together at some point. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is this is my last shot with them. <laughs> this is the week that Virginia puts it together. Um, is it going to be a thing of beauty? Probably not. But I like Virginia to win this game by, by less than a touchdown. I think it'll be competitive. I think they're going to clean things up a little bit. I, I like Virginia winning this by about six points uh, at home. Okay, I think I look at last year. I look at Hard Rock last year. Chance to win late. Uh, field goal missed at the end. Uh, I really have to say what Miami team's going to show up. Mm -hmm. What heart does this team have? Mario Cristobal challenged this team this week after that game said, and he challenged them during the week. He said, who wants to be here and who doesn't? Going up to Charlottesville, a week before the big one with FSU. I got to say Miami finds a way to get it done. Close ball game on the road what fight does this team have if miami protects the ball miami wins i will go miami 21 virginia 17 that's my prediction hey mike sorry for all the commotion with that earlier on i want to thank you for coming on this week 
Uh, this, I'm going to miss this Virginia thing after with the realignment coming on after, after this season. I'm going to miss that. Yeah, you know, Virginia and Virginia Tech. The Virginia Tech rivalry has been so good with Miami, and uh, Miami's a fun program to, to be around. And personally, I love the trips down to South Florida. So uh, I hope the schedule is kind and, and we're hooked up plenty of times here in the future. Yes, definitely. Mike, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. See you. Uh, enjoy the game Saturday. Thanks for having me. All right. Let me stop recording. Hold on a minute.